Hey guys, in this clip I'm going to show you how to solve an absolute value equation. There's a procedure at the top. Uh, we'll read through it quickly and then I'll show you three examples. The first is that you're going to want to isolate the absolute value expression, which means to get it by itself. Then once you've done that, you're going to create two new equations. The first is just going to be a rewrite without the absolute value bars and then you're going to solve. The second equation is going to be a rewrite but negating the right hand side and then solve and negating means take the opposite of and then the fifth part is to check which is really important especially in these types of equations because sometimes your answers don't work. Okay let's take a look at the first one. Um, the problem is twice the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 1 equals 15. So to start, notice that the absolute value expression is not isolated. It's not by itself. So what we're going to want to do is peel away the extra things in order to get it by itself. And I'm going to start by subtracting 1. The next thing that I'm going to do is divide by 2. Now the absolute value expression is isolated. It's at this time that I'm going to make my two equations. And I like to denote that with these arrows. The first will be x minus 3 is equal to 7. And the second will be x minus 3 is equal to negative 7. Solving each, x equals 10, x equals negative 4. So here are my two answers. Now I'm going to check them to make sure that they actually work. And to check, you're always supposed to go back to the original equation. So 10 minus 3 is 7. The absolute value of 7 is 7, times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. So that checks. Checking negative 4. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7, and that's the same result as before. So these both work. So there are two answers. In number 2, we observe uh, the absolute value of x plus 5 plus 12 equals 10. Again, the absolute value expression is not isolated there's this plus 12 on the same side and we want to get rid of that. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. Okay, now the, uh, the outcome here is a little bit interesting. We've got the absolute value equal to something negative. By definition, the absolute value represents a distance. It's the distance from the number in the absolute value to zero on a number line. And distance can't be negative, so already I'm suspicious of this answer and I'm thinking that there's no solution. So I'm going to write this over to the side, but I'm not committing to it just yet. Let's assume that I was taking a quiz and I was really nervous and I got to this point, but no, no flag went up in my head and I just kept going like I would have done before. Let's see what happens. Equation number one, x plus 5 is equal to negative 2. And then a rewrite negating the right-hand side would be x plus 5 is equal to 2. So now I get x is equal to negative 7, x is equal to negative 3. Now the fact that these answers are negative isn't that big of a deal. We have the negative 4 over here in problem 1. It's when we check I think we're going to have a problem. Let's start by checking negative 7. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and 2 plus 12 is 14, not 10. So this one does not work. Now we'll check negative 3. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2, and 2 plus 12 is 14, not 10. This one does not work either. So in fact, this one has no solution. There's no answer that you're going to get that's going to work. And again, many of you may have noticed that at this step right here. The absolute value can never equal something negative. Now for the last example. In the last example, the absolute value expression is already isolated. So I'm just ready to write the two new equations. 2x minus 4 is equal to x minus 8. 2x minus 4 is equal to negative x plus 8. Be careful when you're negating a multi-termed expression that you negate each of them. You're applying a negative to each term in that expression. I'm going to draw a little line here just to delineate the two equations. In the first one, 
when we solve for x, we're going to get x is equal to negative 4. In the second one, we're going to get 3x is equal to 12, which means that x equals positive 4. Now let's check those and see what happens. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. The absolute value of that is 12. Then we've got the equal sign. And now we'll plug in negative 4 onto this side. Negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12. Now it looks close, but it's got to be exactly the same. So these are not equal. This does not check. Let's try 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. Absolute value of 4 is 4. And over here, we get 4 minus 8, which is negative 4. So this does not equal either. So in fact, neither of these check, and we end up getting no solution for this as well. Checking is often something that students neglect to do. They feel a little bit overconfident. Eh, I'm not going to check. It's not a big deal. For absolute value equations, you really want to check because there's many instances where your answers don't work.